Insulin glargine is a long-acting insulin, or also known as a basal insulin. Currently, the glargine insulin being used in Manitoba long-term care facilities is the Lantus 100 units per mil, 10 mil vial. Currently, this product is on back order from the sole manufacturer, Sanofi Aventus Canada, and, and until at least the end of March 2022. Across all five regions of Manitoba, there's over 200 PCH residents in more than 80 PCHs serviced by Medisystem who are currently using the Lantus 10 mil vials. So with this significant usage, Medisystem's inventory will be depleted. Once the current supply of Lantus 10 mil vials is exhausted, Medisystem will be implementing an automatic substitution to transition residents to Basiglar insulin. Basiglar insulin is a biosimilar of Lantus, and what this means is both Lantus and Basiglar are glargine insulin. They're both similar in terms of onset of action, duration of action, it's the same dosage that's used, and it's the same dosing schedule. Documentation of the automatic substitution for the resident's health record will be provided by the Medisystem pharmacist when the product is being switched. For refill requests, Medisystem will start dispensing Basiglar once their supply of Lantus is depleted. If the resident still has a supply of Lantus insulin at the PCH, continue to use the Lantus until it runs out and then switch to the Basiglar brand. When starting to use the Basiglar brand, transcribe the automatic substitution information onto the March MAR. Transitioning to Basiglar quick pens was already planned for the PCHs in Manitoba, but the timeline is being expedited due to the shortage. Basiglar is the PCH contracted glargine insulin that will be supplied by Medisystem going forward. So training for all PCHs is important, even if your site doesn't currently have a resident who will be transitioning at this time. We hope that the PCH nurses will find the insulin pens easy to use and that the residents will find the injections more comfortable with the shorter needle size. The current transition to quick pens is for glargine insulin only at this time. All other types of insulin will continue to be dispensed in vials, but we may consider further quick pen transitions in the future based on feedback. Basiclar insulin is not available in vials only in cartridges and pre-filled insulin pens called quick pens. Let's take a closer look at the Basiglar quick pen, as that is going to be the product supplied by Medisystem pharmacists to the PCHs. Basiglar quick pen is a disposable pre-filled insulin pen that contains glargine insulin 100 units per mil in a 3 mil cartridge. This type of pen comes pre-filled with insulin, so once the insulin content is depleted or becomes expired, the entire insulin pen is discarded in the pharmaceutical waste container. In contrast to a reusable insulin pen, the quick pen comes pre-loaded with the cartridge, so nursing doesn't need to spend time with loading cartridges into the pen. As I indicated, the quick pens contain three mils of insulin, and they're designed to be used multiple times for a single person using a new pen needle with each injection. The pen cap of the quick pen is removable, and once removed, the rubber stopper is exposed, and it's at the rubber stopper where you attach the needle to. On the opposite end, there is a dose window and indicator, and the dose dial and plunger. Administration of insulin via pre-filled insulin pens requires specific pen needles. As nursing staff will be administering the insulin, safety engineered needles are required to be used to protect them against needle stick injuries. The safety engineered pen needle available is the BD AutoShield Duo Safety Pen Needle, which is a 30 gauge 5 millimeter length needle. There are protective shields at both ends to protect against needle stick injuries. Throughout the presentation, the BD AutoShield Duo Safety Pen Needle may be referred to as pen needles. As I indicated, the pen needle needs to get attached to the rubber stopper end of the quick pen. Let's refer to the diagram of the BD AutoShield Duo Pen Needle. Under the caption before use, 
We see that an outer shield covers the needle and during administration as the pin needle is held against the skin and pressure applied, the outer shield covering will move upwards and this allows the needle to penetrate into the skin. After injection, as the needle is removed from the skin, an inner shield is activated passively and slides back over the needle. A red indicator band then confirms that the shield is locked and that the needle pin has been used. The orange shield at the pen connection end will deploy and cover the needle upon removal from the quick pen. Once used, dispose of the pen needle in the sharps container. A new pen needle must be used with each injection. PCHs will need to order the BD AutoShield dual pen needles from their regular medical supplier or materials management. Insulin pens are designed to be used with pen needles in order to deliver a, an accurate and consistent dose of insulin each time the pen is used. Conventional insulin needles should never be used to drop insulin from a cartridge or pre-filled insulin pen. It has been reported to ISMP that insulin cartridges and pre-filled insulin pens have been misused as multi-dose vials and nurses have drawn up doses with conventional insulin needles. Using a conventional insulin needle can introduce air into the cartridge or pre-filled pen, which can interfere with the proper mechanics of the pen. This can lead to inaccurate dose measurements the next time the insulin pen is used, in particular under dosage as air is actually being withdrawn instead of insulin. Insulin pens are resident specific. One insulin pen for one resident. However, ISMP has received reports involving incidents where one insulin pen was being shared among several patients. Even using a new pen needle in between patients, there is a risk of transmission of bloodborne pathogens through cross contamination from the pen. And there is evidence that biological matter does enter the cartridge after an injection. A pharmacy-generated resident label will be affixed to the outside of the Basiglar insulin box. Each box contains five quick pens, and each quick pen will also have a resident-specific label affixed to the barrel of the pen. It will be affixed in a manner as to not obstruct the dose window or information on the cartridge, such as lot number or manufacturer expiry date. The pharmacy label is not to be removed or moved to another area of the insulin pen once received at the PCH or when the pen is in use. ISNP has received reports of cross-contamination of insulin pens as a result of the label being affixed to the cap of the insulin pen. What happened is the pen cap from one patient's insulin pen got accidentally placed onto another patient's insulin pen and inadvertently, the two patients' insulin pens got mixed up. Long-term care nurses must ensure that insulin pens are labeled with the correct resident identifier information before each use. MediSystem Pharmacy will dispense a full box of Basiglar quick pens for all new orders and refill requests. The unused insulin pens are kept in the resident labeled box and stored in the fridge at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Provided the unused insulin pens have been stored in the fridge, they can be used until the manufacturer's expiry date is reached. As similar to other types of insulin, Basiglar insulin is not to be frozen. If it accidentally does get frozen, it should not be used and discarded of in the pharmaceutical waste container. Only one Basiglar quick pen per resident is to be removed from the fridge in use at a time. The Basiclar quick pen is given a beyond use date of 28 days after the first use. Pharmacy will affix a blank auxiliary label to each quick pen, and nursing will need to fill in the discard after date, which is calculated 28 days from when the quick pen was first used. In the example shown, a quick pen removed from the fridge and first used on March 6, having a beyond use date of 28 days, needs to be discarded on April 3rd. And so then nursing would also um, write April 3rd in the discard after date on the auxiliary label. Once in use, the Basiglar quick pen is stored at room temperature. 
It is recommended that the in-use quick pen be stored in the residence pouch porter or residence specific bin in the medication cart. Storing quick pens communally, example, all of the residents on one unit, their quick pens being stored in the same bin or Ziploc bag is not recommended due to the potential for selection error and the wrong pen being selected for the wrong resident. After all supplies are collected, the quick pen can be prepared and the pen needle attached to the quick pen. Nursing is to collect a clean, a clean paper towel, alcohol swabs, the quick pen, and a new pen needle. After hand hygiene is performed, the pen cap can be removed from the quick pen and set aside on a clean paper towel or on an alcohol swab. The rubber seal of the quick pen is wiped for 15 seconds with an alcohol swab. The rubber seal of the quick pen is wiped for 15 seconds with an alcohol swab. The peel tab of the BD Auto Shield Duo pen needle is removed and the needle is attached directly to the quick pen. The pen needle gets screwed onto the quick pen in a clockwise direction until resistance is met. But it's important not to over tighten because over tightening can actually damage the pen needle. This could then result in insulin not being able to flow through the needle properly and that could result in the resident not getting their dose of insulin. And also over tightening could damage the safety shields in the pen needle. And if that were the situation, that could increase the nurse's risk of getting a needle stick injury. Once the pen needle is attached to the quick pen, the outer cover of the pen needle can be removed and discarded. Priming is the process that ensures the pen needle is properly attached to the quick pen and the flow of insulin is not obstructed. Obstructed insulin flow could result in insulin not being administered properly to the resident. Every time a new pen needle is attached to the quick pen, priming must occur. Priming will not cause the safety shields of the BD Autoshield Duo to be activated. Priming involves setting the dose of insulin to two units by turning the dose knob of the quick pen. Hold the quick pen with the needle pointing upwards and push the bottom end of the quick pen, the dose knob and the plunger until the dose shows as zero in the dosage window. Look for several drop, drops or a stream of insulin from the end of the needle and shake off the pen needle to remove any residual insulin. If no insulin is seen at the needle tip, continue to repeat the priming process until insulin is seen. Before dialing the dosage of insulin on the quick pen, the dose of glargine insulin is to be confirmed by referring to the resident's MAR. When nursing starts to administer the insulin glargine via the quick pen, the March MAR must be updated by discontinuing the previous Lantus order and rewriting the insulin glargine order for the Basaglar quick pen from the auto sub form sent by MediSystem. Only add the Basaglar insulin to the March MAR once the resident's supply of Lantus at the PCH has been used up and switching to Basaglar. Starting with the April MARS, the Basaglar quick pen will print as shown on the slide, so nursing is aware to look for an insulin pen. Once the insulin glargine dose has been confirmed, the dose can be dialed by turning the dose knob on the quick pen until the ordered insulin dose lines up with the dose indicator inside the dose window. The dose knob for the quick pen moves in both clockwise and counterclockwise direction to help select the correct dose. Since insulin is a high alert medication, a second nurse check of the resident's name, insulin type, dose on the MAR, and dial dose is recommended. The second nurse should initial the MAR underneath the second nurse row. If a second nurse is not available, the nurse can do a self-check with a timeout in between. Example, they can dial up the insulin dose per the MAR, perform another task such as giving the residents oral medications, come back and double check the resident's name, type of insulin, dose on the MAR, and dial dose before administering the insulin to the resident. With the Basaglar quick pen, 80 units is the maximum amount of insulin that can be dialed up at a time. So for doses greater than 80 units, 
the dose of insulin is going to need to be divided and administered into two or more different sites. For each injection, obtain a new pen needle and prime the quick pen prior to preparing for the injection. And repeat all the steps that will be reviewed in the following slides to ensure the entire dose of insulin has been given. And as we mentioned before, a second nurse check of the resident's name, insulin type, dose on the MAR, and each dial dose is recommended. The quick pen will not allow you to dial more units than is left in the pen. If a partial dose remains in the pen, inject the partial dose and then give the remaining dose using a new quick pen. So for example, if the ordered dose of Gorgian insulin is 48 units and there's only 20 units remaining in the quick pen in use, you will only be able to obtain and administer 20 units from that pen. A new quick pen will need to be obtained from the fridge and the 28 units administered from it after attaching a new pen needle and priming the new quick pen. It is normal to see a small amount of insulin left in an insulin pen that cannot be injected. When preparing to inject the insulin, pick a site on the abdomen, outer thigh, upper arm, or upper buttocks, and select an area which is free of lumps, bumps, and scars. The abdomen is the preferred site of injection, that is where there is the most consistent absorption of insulin. But do avoid eject injecting two to three centimeters around the belly button. Ensure that the injection sites are rotated by following a structured site rotation for the resident and cleanse the area of skin prior to injecting insulin. To facilitate injection site rotation, document the site of injection on the MAR each time. A potential complication of subcutaneous in insulin injection is lipodystrophy. Lipodystrophy is when fat redistributes and causes lumps under the skin. The risk of lipodystrophy at the injection site is higher when injection sites are not rotated with each insulin injection. Injecting insulin into sites with lipodystrophy could result in a decreased rate of insulin absorption, variable rates of insulin absorption, resulting in variable glycemic response, and an increased rate, rate of unexpected hypoglycemia and elevated A1C levels. It is recommended to avoid injecting into sites with lipodystrophy, and site rotation is essential to prevent lipodystrophy and to facilitate insulin absorption. And to the right, this is an example of a rather larger lipodystrophic area. When preparing to inject the insulin with an insulin pen, Grip the pen in the palm of your hand, keeping your thumb up. If injecting into a soft area, hold the skin taut as in the first picture below. Insert the pen needle into the skin at a 90 degree angle until the clear shield on the BD Auto Shield Dual retracts and the white shield is flushed to the resident's skin. So this is an example here. This is the clear shield, and it continues to get pushed down to the skin until the white sleeve is in, in direct contact with the skin. To perform the actual injection, push the end of the pen, the dose knob, and the plunger with your thumb, maintaining constant pressure until it stops. Do not lift the insulin pen until the injection is fully completed. After the injection is complete, hold the insulin pen at the injection site at a 90 degree angle in the skin and continue to maintain constant pressure on the dose knob. Count slowly to 10 seconds to ensure the full amount of insulin dose is given and an adequate amount of time has been given for the insulin to distribute from the pen needle to the subcutaneous layer. And just on the, the picture here to the right, this is an example of an incorrect angle. So even when you're holding, to, holding the needle and counting to 10, maintain that pen needle in a 90 degree angle. While maintaining constant pressure, do not switch hands. Avoid applying excessive pressure though, as you don't want to cause any pain or discomfort to the resident. And you also want to avoid indenting the skin while injecting. Um, if you're indenting the skin, this could increase the risk of an intramuscular injection 
could increase the risk of bruising or increase the risk of bleeding. After counting to 10, take your thumb off of the dose knob and pull the needle straight out of the skin. A common question in the literature is whether or not a five millimeter length pen needle is adequate to be used by all individuals with diabetes, or should some individuals be using a longer length pen needle? Perfect Canada recommendations for five or six millimeter pen needles are suitable for all people living with diabetes, regardless of their BMI. Insulin is best absorbed from the subcutaneous layer. So if we see here in the first diagram, um, a four millimeter needle, for instance, it is long enough to penetrate through the skin layer and it does meet into the subcutaneous tissue. We do not want the um, insulin being injected into the muscle layer. And what can actually happen with longer needle length, such as 8 to 12.7 millimeters, there is an increased risk of intramuscular injection. And with intramuscular injection, this could lead to pain. And it could also lead to unpredictable absorption of insulin, resulting in hypo or hyperglycemia. And new research of the skin shows that on average, the skin is only 1.6 to 2.4 millimeters thick in people living with diabetes. So even with a 5 millimeter length pen needle, it is a suitable length to reach the subcutaneous layer regardless of the BMI. And we can just see in this layer here how the pen needle, it can penetrate through the skin layer and it, it's a good, good length to result in um, administering the insulin into the subcutaneous tissue. Studies have also shown that 5 millimeter pen needles were as effective as 8 millimeter needles in obese patients. And the 5 millimeter length was actually preferred due to there being less pain. For most people, when using a 5 millimeter pen needle, the needle can be delivered with a no pinch up method at a 90 degree angle. However, for residents who are very lean, a pinch up method may be required to avoid injecting into the muscle, and in particular if an alternate site of injection cannot be used. So to perform the pinch up method with a pen needle and insulin pen, lift a 2.5 centimeter skin fold Keep your fingers at least 2.5 centimeters apart to avoid an accidental needle poke when inserting the needle. Grip the pen in the palm of your hand and keep your thumb up. Insert the needle into the pinch up at a 90 degree angle to the pinch up. While holding the pinch for the entire time while administering the insulin, continue to hold the pinch up for the additional 10 seconds after you've completed the injection. Do not insert the pen needle at an angle towards the finger as this um, injecting at an angle could also cause a accidental needle poke to yourself. After the injection is complete and the needle is removed from the skin, it is important to confirm that the entire dose of insulin was given. In the dosage window of the quick pen, zero should be showing at the completion of the injection, confirming the full dose was given. If a number other than zero is showing, the full dose of insulin has not been administered. If this occurs, make note of the number in the window. This is the amount of insulin that still needs to be given. Turn the dose knob on the quick pen back until it shows zero. Remove the used pen needle and attach a new pen needle to the quick pen and perform the priming process. Select and administer the remainder of the insulin dose. Removing and discarding the pen needle. The safety shield on the BD Auto Shield Duo should now be locked and a red indicator band will appear to confirm this. Remove the pen needle from the quick pen by turning it in a counterclockwise direction. When removing the pen needle, place your fingers on either side of the white pen needle shields. The orange shield at the pin connection end should have deployed and covered the needle upon the removal from the quick pen. Dispose of the used pen needle in the sharps container. The last step in using the quick pen is to cleanse it and store it for the next dose. 
Retrieve the pen cap that you set aside on the paper towel or the alcohol swab at the beginning of preparation. It is important to recap the quick pen in order to protect insulin from light. Cleanse the quick pen with a facility approved disinfectant wipe and then perform hand hygiene and return the quick pen to the storage site. Again, it is recommended to be stored in the resident's pouch porter or resident specific bin in the medication cart. Once the insulin cartridge is empty or beyond use or expiry date has passed, discard the entire quick pen in the pharmaceutical waste container. Once the dose of glargine insulin has been administered, nursing is to document the injection on the MAR. Record the site of injection on the MAR in the site column. If a second nurse performed a second check, they should initial in the second nurse row. BD has prepared videos on the use of their pen needles in conjunction with insulin pens. This particular video we're now going to watch is five minutes, and it reviews all steps from preparation of the quick pen and pen needle to administering insulin and disposal of the pen needle. It is a video that nursing could refer to to become acquainted with the new delivery method. This video guide outlines the proper steps for performing an injection with the BD Auto Shield Duo Safety Pen Needle and helpful injection tips for frequently asked questions. BD Auto Shield Duo Safety Pen Needle currently offers a high level of protection for healthcare workers and patients with a needle concealment shield so that patients don't have to see or be intimidated by the needle. A 5 mm pen needle for a one-handed, no skin lift injection, providing lower risk of needle stick injuries for healthcare workers and a lower risk of intramuscular injection for patients. A large barrel for easy handling and attachment. Passive front and back end safety shield that protect both sharp ends of the needle throughout the injection process. And a red indicator band that automatically deploys with the shield after use, confirming that it is locked and that the needle has been used. Remember, one pen, one patient. The AutoShield Duo is compatible with leading diabetes insulin and GLP-1 pens in Canada. Performing an injection with the BD AutoShield Duo. First, confirm that you have the correct type of insulin and check its expiry date. Then verify the patient's identity. Choose a healthy injection site. The recommended areas are the thigh, back of arms, buttocks, and the preferred area being the abdomen. Be sure to rotate between and within injection areas and that injections are always a finger width apart. When you have selected an appropriate site, cleanse the skin. With the patient ready, you can prepare the pen needle. Remove the pen cap and wipe the rubber seal on the pen with an alcohol swab. Pull the peel tab off the pen needle. Holding the outer cover, screw the pen needle straight onto the pen just until you feel resistance. Do not over tighten. Remove the outer cover. Check that the pen needle is attached correctly and prime the pen according to the manufacturer's directions. Typically this involves dispensing two units at a time until you see a drop of liquid at the needle tip. Remember, prime before every injection to remove any air from the needle and cartridge that may collect during normal use and to ensure that the pen is working correctly. Always hold the pen with the needle pointing up. If you notice any insulin that may have collected in the plastic shield due to priming, Shake the excess off to prevent it from pooling on the patient's skin. With the pen ready, you can select the patient's insulin dose. Now administer the injection. Most patients do not require a skin lift with a 5 mm needle. Palm grip the pen, do not hold it like a syringe, but instead keep your thumb away from the button and inject at a 90 degree angle to the skin. Insert the needle in one continuous motion until the white sleeve is flush with the skin. Maintain constant pressure and do not change hands. Depress the insulin pen button to administer the insulin. For holding times, please refer to the manufacturer prescribing information for the specific insulin, which can be up to 10 seconds. Lift the pen from the skin and confirm that the dose window is at zero. The red end indicator shows that the safety shield is locked. Hold the white sleeve of the pen needle and twist it off. The pen connection end of the needle is now protected by an orange shield. Immediately dispose of the used pen needle in a sharps container. To help you and your patients have more successful injections with BD Auto Shield Duo, we've collected a few helpful tips and answers to common questions. Most patients do not require a skin lift with a 5mm needle. 
you can inject straight in at a 90 degree angle to the skin. However, some patients may require a skin lift to be performed. For these patients, be sure to hold the skin lift for the entire time while administering the injection. Alternatively, you could inject at a site with more subcutaneous tissue where no skin lift would be required. If no droplet of insulin is seen when priming the pen, it's important to keep priming until you do. Priming is an important step to ensure that the pen needle has connected to the insulin cartridge and that an accurate dose will be delivered. If you are unsure about priming, refer to the insulin pen manufacturer's directions. Once the white sleeve of the BD AutoShield Duo is flush with the skin, it's important to hold the pen steady and not lift it off until the injection is complete. If you lift the pen needle, the safety shield will activate and lock, preventing injection. While it's important to maintain pressure against the skin, there's no need to apply excess pressure that may make patients uncomfortable. Just maintain enough consistent pressure to keep the white sleeve flush with the skin. After the injection, you may see some insulin on the skin. While a tiny droplet of liquid is normal, larger amounts may indicate an incorrect injection. Before injecting, remember to shake excess insulin from priming off the pen needle tip and make sure you are injecting into the subcutaneous tissue at the site before you press the insulin button. After delivering the insulin dose, remember to hold the pen needle in the skin for a count of 10 before removing it or as directed by the insulin pen manufacturer. For more information about BD Auto Shield Duo Safety Pen Needles, visit our website or call BD Customer Care at 1-866-979-9408. While well, both types of insulin glargine, Lantus and Basaglar, are similar, increased blood sugar monitoring is recommended for one week after switching to the Basaglar Quick Pen. So recommended monitoring, because Glargine insulin is typically given at bedtime, it would be recommended to check the blood sugar once daily in the morning before breakfast. So if the before breakfast blood sugars is below target for two to three consecutive days, lower the evening insulin glargine dose instead of holding the morning insulin dose. So a new order would need to be obtained from the PCH prescriber to change the dose of the insulin glargine. If the before breakfast blood sugar is above target for two to three consecutive days, Increase the evening insulin glargine dose instead of giving a one-time dose of rapid-acting insulin in the morning. Transient fluctu fluctuations in blood sugar could be indicative of the injection technique. Example, the pen needle was not kept in place long enough for the full dose of insulin to get distributed into the subcutaneous level. If blood sugar levels remain consistent for one week, then you could resume the regular blood sugar monitoring after that one-week switch. After the transition, residents and their caregivers will require training on the new delivery method prior to any short stay absences or social leaves if insulin glargine doses are due during their leave. Information for residents and their caregivers will be prepared and distributed to sites in the near future. We also have um, prepared some training resources for the PCHs and the nursing staff. We've made um, arrangements with BD and they will be sending demonstration kits to all the PCHs in, in um, Manitoba. And what each demonstration kit contains is a, um, it, it contains demonstration quick pens. It contains the BD AutoShield Duo pen needles. And it also contains some injection balls, and it contains a very um, easy to follow step-by-step in-service guide that nursing staff could refer to. So as I mentioned, these demonstration kits are coming from BD, and BD will be sending them directly from their manufacturer directly to the PCHs. And we've asked that the demonstration kits be sent to the PCHs attention PCH educator. And again, they'll be starting to send these kits out this week. A quick reference guide and communication poster will be sent with the training package email. And it is suggested that these two references be posted in the medication room, nurse break areas, communication binder, and or the MAR binder.
The, Medica the MediSystem Pharmacy will also be sending a copy of the communication poster with each resident switch to the Basaglar Quick Pen. On the communication poster are key reminders for nursing, including a link to the five-minute demonstration video from BD that we, just, that we just watched. A QR code for the video is also included on the poster, so nursing can scan the QR code with their phone or unit tablet for immediate access if required for review prior to administering the glargine insulin. And with that, that is the conclusion of our presentation. And this is a list of the references that we use to prepare the presentation.